Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, 63rd of the Tahrir Dialogue series, a dialogue series that started after the historic uh, January 25th revolution and has been uh, a open forum for public debate of interests to the public community. Uh, it started off dealing with uh, domestic issues and issues in Egypt, but naturally given that uh, AUC is a global university and uh, the School of Global Affairs and Public Policy is interested in the world at large, it expanded to deal with many issues of uh, concern both regionally and internationally. Uh, among the things that uh, we discussed and continue to discuss very seriously at the School of Global Affairs is how to give our students and how to give the, you want the community an exposure to all of the world. We are a university in Egypt. Our main focus is Egypt. Our academic education is the American system. But nevertheless, if you want to in, engage yourself in, in, the, in the world today, you need to understand much more than that. Uh, consequently, and more recently, we've had more and more of a focus on Asia. This last week, this week, and the week uh, next, we're going, we have had a number of events at the, at the, at the other campus, and we will have a, a number of them here, bringing in particularly uh, distinguished Asian spokesmen and Asian professors and experts to, on the one hand, talk to us about their own region, but also talk to us about their perception of the Middle East and how they see the Middle East. And we do this from the uh, clear determination and commitment that we live in an interactive, interdependent world uh, what we understand is very important in how we act and how people understand us is also very important in how they act and how we react to them. Today's event, frankly, is not only a very important one for the school, uh, given the highly distinguished nature of uh, the speaker today, but I have to say it's also one of particularly uh, uh, a pleasant, pleasant experience for me personally, having served in, in, in previous capacities as ambassador of Egypt in Japan, and I have uh, very strong and warm memories of my tenure in, in Japan and the hospitality that I received from my Japanese host at the time. So uh, having a Japanese expert who's very knowledgeable in the Middle East and actually knew some things that I just found out now that I hadn't known about actually, uh, but also having the Japanese embassy here led by Ambassador Kugawa uh, doing this with us uh, is a, a particular pleasure. He used to be one of my interlocutors uh, at the Gaima Show, which is the foreign ministry in Japan when I was there, and I'm very happy to continue to work with him in a very constructive fashion today. Uh, the Japanese embassy is also uh, providing support for, for this event, and I want to thank them for the generosity in doing that. That helps us, in many respects, continuing to do uh, uh, projects and uh, events like this, which really expend, ex extend to uh, and expand the knowledge base of the community here in Egypt. I'm going to ask Dr. Robert Mason, who heads our Middle East Center, to uh, introduce the speaker, Professor Nagasawa, but before I do that, I want to uh, invite the ambassador of Japan here in Egypt to come and say a few words. Uh, he, as I said, he's a personal friend, a fellow uh, practitioner, but he's also one of the hosts of this event. Ambassador, can I invite you to take the floor? Good evening <laughs> well, to everybody. Well, thank you very much for well, uh, <coughs> inviting me, uh, well, the, uh, Doctor, well, His Excellency Dr. Well, <coughs> Nabil Fahmi, well, the, and uh, uh, the American University professors, well, the, uh, Dr. Robert Mason and uh, Ibrahim Ahmad. And uh, <coughs> well, let me express uh, at the outset uh, uh, 
my uh, heartfelt uh, uh, congratulations uh, on the uh, 63rd uh, session of uh, Tahari Dialogue. Well, <clears throat> and I'm uh, very happy uh, to be here with you, uh, or I should say the uh, come back to uh, AUC, because uh, I, I was uh, one of the students of AUC well, uh, more than 30 years ago to, uh, to study Arabic language here. And I'm also uh, be very happy uh, to be uh, <coughs> to have uh, the Professor uh, Eiji Nagasawa from uh, uh, the University of Tokyo, uh, very distinguished uh, professor, for whom uh, I, res I respect uh, very much, uh, <coughs> and also the I read the uh, uh, books, uh, uh, his books uh, on the uh, modern uh, history of Egypt. Well, the, uh, his books uh, well, the, uh, is always guiding me, well, uh, and very happy uh, to be uh, with him. And, <coughs> and in fact, uh, well, the theme of uh, uh, his today's lecture was well, pacifism uh, for uh, Japan uh, and the Middle East well, uh, seems to be very uh, uh, interesting. And uh, uh, in fact, the uh, uh, world is facing uh, uh, challenges uh, well, in the Middle East, of course. Uh, needless to say, well, the uh, security and political economic situations, well, I think, are very complex. And uh, in uh, East Asia as well, uh, you, you are seeing, uh, well, the uh, Korean Peninsula and uh, China Sea. Well, I think uh, uh, tensions existing uh, in the middle, uh, in the East Asia uh, as well. Then, uh, in order to address uh, well the uh, peace and stability or pacifism, I should say, well the how you can maintain the peace and stability, and uh, how uh, you uh, you can restore the peace. Uh, I think uh, it should be uh, addressed not only uh, from the military point of view but also the, uh, I think, uh, uh, perspectives of uh, uh, the people's uh, lives or the uh, dignities or that uh, bears, you know, the uh, kind of uh, uh, aspect uh, uh, should be addressed. Uh, well, the, as, you, as you know, uh, the, well, I think uh, two years ago, uh, the new uh, development goals uh, of the UN was adopted at the General Assembly of the UN called the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Now, it's, uh, uh, <coughs> I think, well, newly uh, established and the re uh, replacement of uh, Millennium Development Goals. And uh, uh, its uh, key concept is, uh, well, leave no one behind. Well, it takes uh, uh, well, the human-centered approach to address the issues, well, the various kinds of issues, development, uh, political things, and security things. And I think, well, the, uh, 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 the word concept of human security is one of the clue well, to, uh, to think about uh, how best well, we can do for the peace and, uh, peace and stability. And uh, uh, human security uh, contains the, uh, the uh, very important uh, element, two elements, protection and uh, empowerment of the people. And I think uh, 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 this, uh, uh, today's lecture uh, of, by uh, the Professor uh, Nagasawa uh, give you uh, well, the good opportunity uh, to think about peace and stability or pacifism uh, well, for the future. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to uh, host uh, today Professor uh, Eiji Nagasawa. Uh, he's professor in the Department of West Asian Studies, Institute for Advanced Studies on Asia at the University of Tokyo. Uh, he's been professor there since 1998. He's been engaged in research in area studies of the Middle East with a focus on socioeconomic history of modern Egypt. He's been director of the J Japanese Society for Promotion of Science Research Center in Cairo from April 98 to March 99. Uh, before that, president, uh, sorry, after that, president of Japan Association for Middle East Studies from April 2009 to March 2011. 
His main works, of which there are English and Japanese uh, versions, his main English works are Modern Egypt Through Japanese Eyes, a study of intellectual and socio-economic aspects of Egyptian nationalism, Guide to Parliamentary Records in Monarchical Egypt, and his works in Japanese and Egyptian Self-Portrait, Gamal Hamdan, The Personality of Egypt, and The Irrigation of System of Modern Egypt, uh, as well as Jewish Egyptian Marxists and the Palestine question. Uh, so please join me in welcoming uh, Professor Nagasawa. Thank you. So, uh, thank, thank you, kind introduction, uh, Dr. Mason. And also, uh, thank you very much for the, the kind words from uh, his, Majesty, his Excellency Nabi Fahmi, um, Dr. Nabi Fahmi, and His Excellency Ambassador uh, Kangawa. Maybe I, 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 want, I ask Ambassador Kangawa to deliver <laughs> the, the, the speech instead of me on the human security. <laughs> but uh, I so, oh, sorry. Maybe I, I missed them. So, uh, the, sorry, uh, I, I, I erased some <laughs> so, slides. Anyway, so, uh, so yes, uh, first of all, I, I, I must confess that I am not a political scientist or the specialist to security issues. I'm just a, a researcher with area studies in, in specialized, as, as Dr. Mason mentioned, I, as, uh, in the modern economic history of Egypt. But so in these uh, six years since the Arab revolutions uh, or Arab Springs, I, I, I hate this word anyway. Uh, so uh, I was asked to deliver many lectures and write so analysis for the political situation. So I am I so so I, I this day so today I, I uh, took, took the the topic very so so challenging topic for me maybe for you also uh, pacifism problem uh, for Japan and the Middle East so just uh, I, later I told you tell you that the, this is not the result of my so long research work but the, just I want to give, give you the, some so, so the key points key issues to consider as a pacifism, uh, both in Japan and Middle East. So, so uh, at first I want to so, uh, so go, uh, talk about the history of war. Uh, as a, now, estimate this in the war in Syria around this, this number, more than is, is, so, so, is 300,000 people killed in only six years. But in, in 80, 1980, uh, 45, around the same uh, the number of Japanese citizens killed only in six months, from March, March to August in, uh, in 1945, just by the area bombardment. In, Tokyo, in the case of Tokyo, so 100,000 people killed only one night, 10 March. As you know, the, there are many so, so the victims in Hiroshima, uh, as I showed in the slide, or also Nagasaki. The, the also, on and, and the total, uh, three point million Japanese is, is supposed to be killed in the World War II. But of course, we should so refer that several times person victims in China and other Asian countries at times. So. So as we so choose as a, a, a so-called post-war pacifism, uh, as it is expressed in the Japanese Constitution and Article Nine. But this issue is very that is a very became very hot issues, according to the with the development of Japan America alliance in this decades. Uh, this is a, so Article nine of the Japanese constitution. Maybe you can get the Arabic relations, uh, translations. Maybe so this, just, just two things. We, we, in summary, so we don't uh, use the war as a, uh, we don't make a war. The second one, we don't have uh, the army. Anyway, very, very simple question. 
So, but uh, last, last two years, though we have this heated argument on the new security law legislations. Uh, the, it, this allows the exercise the collective self-defense rights. So public opinion in Japan was divided into two camps, realist camp and so-called pacifist, pacifist camp, or in another word, so uh, proactive, proactive pacifism, or is ab absolute pacifism. I, I, I don't know if this, this term is correct or not. Anyway, in these years, uh, the, so we, we observe the, uh, the development of security uh, restorations, such like, like this, uh, this establishment of National Security Council, National Security Strategy, strategy uh, National Defense Program Guidelines, or the relaxation of weapons export regulations. For academics, so we now facing the uh, one problem, the so military and academic co cooperation, because the Ministry of Defense uh, so uh, kindly gave us to uh, give such grants. So, but uh, in general, the academic society is very so so negative to to this offer. <laughs> anyway, so this is oh, this is a is a thing in the. the the committee in the Japanese parliament years ago, it is not a pacifist <laughs> thing, anyways. <laughs> also, we have some much uh, demonstration uh, <laughs> outside the parliament, like this. So now, so we, we, um, we go to the, uh, the field of the Middle East. Maybe, maybe it is not, we, we need many words to explain the, the current crisis in the Middle East. but. I must say, say that the Arab Revolution started as non-violent movement. So the famous slogan, Zilmiya, pacifism, was shouted by the, the many youths in Tunisia and Egypt. Uh, it's among them, you are among them, you, among them. So, but uh, three forces destroyed this dream of revolutionary youth. Maybe I, I, this, this, I, I last, yesterday I explained this, this uh, topic in Cairo University. That is a relentless suppression by all regimes to external military intervention and the jihadist forces. One of the so typical uh, story of the death of so-called little Gandhi, uh, Gyas Matar, he, he distributed water and flowers as soldiers in security forces, but finally he was captured and killed in, in, uh, by torture September, uh, to, uh, September 2011. So we know the, the latest tragedy of Syria now. But the, this Japanese security issue and its cri political crisis in the Middle East with, is uh, so so connected in the bottom. Just we, uh, for re re correct, re review the, the Japanese uh, so national security policies and the situation with the Middle East. So-called Omoi Yari Yosan, so host nation support the US Army started in 1976. Then the then Japan government cooperated with the United States to it, for defense sharing, sea lane, natural neutral miles. And in 83, US, US CENTCOM was established, and uh, we decided to logistic support by uh, Japan's self defense force to the United States. After that, the so called Tanka War, Iran Iraq War, happens, and that time the Nakasone government. The, the argument to dispatch the maritime guard, SDF to the Persian Gulf, but so, uh, so it, it, it was so, uh, not, n not in actions. And the Gulf War happens, 1991, and uh, we, we, this is a very clear memory to, for us to, until now, we paid uh, $13 billion to multinational forces. So the government tried to issue, so issue uh, as an, uh, make a new law, international peace cooperation law, so-called PKO law. So, then the, uh, so Japan try, try, uh, want, uh, can to, could, so dispatch the SDF for a PKO of United Nations. 
And then the, uh, so September 11th, and we issued new, the government issued new law, and the uh, maritime SD refueled for US Army in Afghanistan. Then war against Iraq happens, and we, uh, the government issued an uh, additional, so new law to and dispatch the S, uh, SDF in Iraq by request of the United States. Now, so the, the, the SDF have a basement in Djibouti for a palace in Somalia, and uh, just, just, uh, just now, uh, SDF keeping activities going in South Sudan. And yes. Uh, so, how do you think about the, this so, uh, uh, pacifism in both countries? So, today I want to so propose you some so 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 issues to uh, topics to uh, consider as the pacifism. How how we construct or reconstruct the pacifism in this this both two areas? So maybe it, it is. As I told you, I, I cannot show any conclusion. Just I make some research proposal for you. Uh, but it's a, I have three points uh, in my uh, uh, presentation uh, to consider these topics. First is uh, the role of literature in considering pacifism. So I want to refer the, the famous uh, poet Okano Hirohiko and his collection, uh, Baghdad the Moyu, Baghdad in Fires. It was published in 2007. He gained two hours for this work. Uh, Tanka is a Japanese short uh, poem, uh, not, not haiku, uh, with uh, 31 syllables. So I, I translate some, maybe so there are many Japanese audience also, <laughs> and <laughs> They can show, make a more beautiful <laughs> translation. Just by, I show that some, for example, Horobiku Hono Honaka no Sakuru Mitishi, Ware no Kokoro no Shura, Shura Shizumarasu. A Shura in my heart could never be harsh since I had looked at cherry blossom in a perishing fire. Cherry blossom, now is in Japan, in Tokyo, the perish, cherry blossom just started last week. But cherry blossom has some meaning, some, some very so beautiful death in the war, a kind of the samurai culture. Of course, the Japanese government, army used this so, 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 so image to, to go in the war. Uh, so this is uh, the second one. We will, we, will, we will never pardon the president declared, declared we are going into the war of crusade. <laughs> the third one is uh, so, I hear the voice and I for, for, for ever young, young deceased friends complain as follows We didn't want to lose our lives for building such kind of world. Because he, this is a memory of his colleagues, student soldiers, following their lives in the World War II. So uh, Okano commented at the ceremony of the one hour. So I was born in a hereditary family of Shinto. Shinto is a Japanese naturalist religion, priest. And uh, belong to the uh, Senchu Sudai, the war generation, experienced the war. And learned from the scholar, of famous scholar, ancient history of Origut Shinobu. This decided the way of my life and study. The traditional waka, Japanese poem, of carrying the unhappy, incomplete spirit of death in the war, revived in my mind, and the new stimulus of the war against Iraq. So, most of Japanese easily remember the anti war tradition in Tanka, and as one case, Yosano, Akiko Yosano, uh, a long, uh, long poem, Oh Brother, Please Not to Be Die, Kimi Shintamo Koto Nakare. Uh, it is written in the time of the Japan Russo War. She complains the conspiracy of his brother to go to the war in Russia, the war, 
go with Russia. Too many people were killed in, too many youths were killed in the wars. And I just translate the first part. Oh, brother, my, I am weeping for you. Brother, please don't not to be die. Our parents love you, your youngest son, more than others. But did, you, did they ask you to take a knife and kill two people? Did they, did they really allow you to kill people and kill yourself? So, uh, but this is a, maybe the, the first expression of the pacifism in modern Japan. But this, uh, uh, but social, in that time, socialist pacifism was suppressed uh, by the so high, Dainyagujiken high tourism present, an abortable attempt at assassination of Ten, Tenno, His Majesty, the, uh, has a, uh, so it's it's, it's called, it is, it then later revealed this the publication of the police in 1910. So then the, we go the way to the militarism or Japanese fascism in 1930s. Then it made many victims in of Japanese Jews. But we have some criticism against Yosano's treacheries had territory during the Sino Japanese War and World War II because she supported these so colonial wars. But through, but recently we I, I think he, how he had she changed his attitude, the her poem still has the power for the people. I I found the slogan in the anti war demonstration demonstration last uh, uh, summer uh, 2015, this one. What? Here, so it's a white one. <laughs> Please, uh, you don't kill people <laughs> in the white flags, the written. This is some imitation uh, phrase from the uh, San Akiko, anyway. So, how, I don't know the case of the Arab novel or Middle Eastern literature. So I, I, I would like to so, so ask you to teach me some other good example. Just I, I give you some so the, the, the cases. Maybe clearly you have the, the famous motif of evading the graft, the conscriptions in Arab novels. Yusuf al Qaid, famous Arab so Egyptian novelist, wrote a book, a novel, Harab Fibbar. Battle of Misr, uh, war in the land of Egypt. That's uh, the story of the uh, October War, and uh, reveals the injustice to Omuda, which chief to to evade his son from the draft. So, of course, this is a symbol of corruption in Egyptian society, not only anti-war so, uh, uh, theme. But so we, we know the, the many so, so cases of peasant resistance to so, so Muhammad Ali's draft system in the 19th centuries. They use a variety of methods to, to evade the draft, to enduring the, some parts of the uh, body or something others, eyes or uh, legs or something else. Maybe this is a similar <laughs> methods so other people in the world is used. With another case is uh, Rafik Shami's so, so the novels. Uh, so he, born, he was born in uh, Damascus and immigrated to, to Germ Germany, almost as a shape of exile. Uh, in his famous so, uh, book, so, uh, so, so the Fry, Fry Milka, uh, his famous so, character, the famous character in his novel, storyteller um, Uncle Salim, or Salim, he called his attempt to evade the draft. Uh, this is uh, a separate expression of the experience of the author himself. He hates the, the, the conscription and fled to the, the, the city, uh, Damas, uh, the Germany. Another case. He's, he's, a, so, so he's a big, big, he's a famous uh, so book of the dark side of love. Uh, it, so it's, I found a very so interesting case uh, of the uh, draft evaders. Both communists and members of the Muslim Brothers in the prison, despite draft evaders, blaming his so, cowardice and the lack of malignance. 
And finally, if he was killed in, by torture, maybe this was a real story, not a fiction. So anyway, so I want to so ask, ask again some of you, you, you can give us some other, another good expense, so example of the pacifist tradition or Arab Middle Eastern literature anyways. This is an, an another topic. The second topic is Hiroshima and Arab intellectuals. So I have a one so, so article, essays, uh, on the image of the Arab perception of Hiroshima or Nagasaki issues. Uh, this essay told that they misunderstand the Japanese feeling on, on the sword on Hiroshima. Maybe the word of the, 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 it is written in the Hiroshima so, statutes. So we shall never repeat, repeat to this I am much mistake era for. But maybe it's a very con controversial the phrase. In, in, this is written in front of the Peace Museum in Hiroshima. The, anyway, so in, according to this opinion, so Arab intellectuals want to legitimatize the anti-American or anti-Western feeling, uh, even their terrorist activity by Hiroshima disasters. But maybe it's very it's it's controversial to agree this uh, view or not. Uh, it, so this is another very so controversial issue. But I think there are so many uh, kind, many variety of views on Hiroshima by so uh, Arab Arabs people. My, I want to survey the, how the Arab people perceived have, have the opinions on Hiroshima and Nagasaki issues, because most most of our, our Arab visitors in Japan uh, want to visit uh, Hiroshima. Why they want to visit Hiroshima? So I think it is very important to uh, so consider that pacifism uh, might be shared with Japanese people and Arab peoples. So we organized one symposium, so 2008 in Hiroshima by Islamic Area Studies, my university and the universities. It was a it, it was a six years anniversary Nakba. We tried to co compare Nakba disaster and Hiroshima, because we want the to so seek the international solidarity beyond the political arbitrary exploitation of memories of the disaster such as Hiroshima or Auschwitz. Anyway, maybe, you, you, so this is a, a related important topic. So here I would like to introduce the case of my friend, the late Professor Arafa Abbas. Uh, you, of course, um, all of you are know, knowing him a famous historian and a pioneer of the Jap studies of modern Japan in the Arab world. He is a, a, a Japanese society, Meiji era. Arab Jamar Yabani, Phil Asr Meiji. It's a very so, so pioneer work, first work for the, in this field. Yeah, he wrote uh, his uh, so autobiography about his experience in, in, Jap in Japan. I skip this one, but he has uh, so various intellectual faces. He, he was a natural, nationalist, also a liberal thinker, but the one important aspect, he was a, an Arab pacifist. He translated the Hiroshima diary, Yaomiya to Hiroshima. Uh, so for the first time he visited Hiroshima in 1972 according to his uh, so, uh, autobiography, with dark and gloomy feelings, because it's just after the defeat of uh, 1967 war by Israel, he, 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 oh, he, of course he expressed as a nationalist Israel as a separate daughter of imperialism. Anyway, so, so but he encountered with uh, one book in Hiroshima, called Hiroshima Diary in English edition at bookshop of the Hiroshima Peace Museum, Peace Mu Memorial Museum, and decided to translate. This is the image of the Japanese editions. So he, he completed the translation in seven, uh, 1875 with uh, 1,500 copies. In his translation note, he explained the way to Hiroshima he explains the history, the background of Hiroshima disasters, the history of Japanese fascism, 
and the emergence and ruin and its emergence and ruins, and also history of the development of atomic bomb. The, the problem is that, that that he faced troubles after translations. This is a uh, Arabic is uh, the the 18th translation of this book to foreign language. But though he wrote in his uh, introduction in a, in a word, warning and advice to American friends. <laughs> so maybe it is very so, so dangerous to the uh, so political police, so some police in the Egyptian government at that day. So the sale of this book was suspended by the secret police. Later, so it's it's be sold, but I, I I suppose the number of sold books is not so many. Also, he would would like to who wanted to so export distribute the books to the these countries, so called rejection front states. But these countries all the refused to accept import this book. So he he. he, he he said, I found that I became a victim of Hiroshima and discovered the fierceness of loud voices of these progressive countries. Anyways, I, I, I found the big gap of the Hiroshima's among the, so, so, of, so, between the official discourse and the, the actual political response in Arab countries. The third and the fourth, uh, the, the, and the last uh, so topic is, uh, is uh, to reconsider the, the thought of Gandhi's uh, non-violence, non-violence. So we, we know that this, this is a, so art from, article from BBC, uh, I read it. A number of Western youth were absorbed in reading uh, from a dictatorship to democracy, a conceptual framework for liberation in its, its Arabic translation. By side of the truck tanks deployed in Tahari Square, by the light of the torch during the night, and discussing how to put into practice how, what is written there. So, that, uh, so Gandhi became famous among Arab youth uh, during the revolutionary days. So my senior friends, uh, Professor Hiroita Mangoji, published uh, one book on Gandhi. Uh, he's a specialist uh, researcher of the modern India. How re relevant is Gandhi today, published in India? So I, I just, I'm not, of course, not a specialist of Gandhi's number, so just I introduced his, his works. So uh, maybe Ahinsa, no violence, and the, the relation is, is the crucial uh, issue is the relation between Ahinsa, Ahinsa, non violence, and braveness. Uh, Gandhi mentioned Ahinsa is not a mere negative state of harassment, harass harmlessness, but it is a positive state of love and of doing good even to the evil doers. Ahinsa is a weapon of much less potency. It is a Sumbum bonum of the life. It is attribute of brave. In fact, it is their all. It does not come with in reach of coward. It is not the wooden or lifeless dogma, but a living and life giving force. Ahinsa is not a way of timid and cowardly. It, it is a way of the brave ready to face death. He perishes sword in hand is no doubt brave, but he who faces death without raising his little finger and without flinching is braver, more brave. Maybe so the use in the Tahari Square in the other areas was so get a brave, uh, so uh, much impressed uh, these words. So, uh, but so, so there are some critics on Gandhi or uh, move to reassess re re to the, the Gandhi's so, thought. So satyagraha in practice. Satyagraha insists in truth or holding on to truth or truth force. Uh, the now is known as a principle of civil res resistance. Now, I, I know the news of Sudan. Recently, the Sweden, Sudan women tried to, a kind of a civil assistant of the, uh, the Bashir's uh, government. Anyway, so 
But so how is a no violence can, could be performed in the, the, in the midst of violence? Uh, Professor Yamaguchi so, told me that um, sometimes non-violence may provoke more violence. But there is another, there another question. There is absolute fascism or non-absolute fascism or some relative fascism. Uh, Professor Yamaguchi uh, told in his book that maybe Gandhi is uh, so more realist thinkers. He saw things in uh, relative terms. But uh, he criticized the Gandhi's elitism. So this is Gandhi's words. I regret to have said that in most cases, the peasants are not being educated for non-violence in actions. He is very, has a, so, is a sort of elitism. We, we can imagine the Emmanuel Kant. He's a, so maybe part of pacifism in the modern world. Also, he's a very elitist. His pacifist is only so, so shared with the, the middle class or civilized person, not the common people. Anyway, so it's, it's, uh, Professor Emanguchi mentions uh, it may be an irony of history that this letter on, on nonviolence it was written at a place called about the, about the bird. Now known the place where Osama bin Laden was murdered in 2011. So how we, we how do <laughs> Comprehends this so so, so and, and so so, so gap between the uh, learning and Gandhi. So uh, so it, it is another point of critics on Gandhi's malignous and um, and issue with malignous and coward. He has clearly has a gender prejudice. So uh, cowardice becomes something even worse to him than violence. And the manliness, even more viable than, than non-violence. Cowardice is worse than violence, even though violence in such a case does not cease to be violence. So, uh, so, so we remember the case of the, the uh, draft evaders, Naji, in the novel of Rafik Shami. He was blamed as his cowardness, the lack of manliness. So, uh, also, uh, is a problem of the non-violence non issue, non-violence on women. Uh, so during Gandhi time, that, so the descent in South Africa, he discovered that male youth had a green harassing two uh, of his female followers. Gandhi responded by personally cutting the girl's hair off to endure the sinner's eye was sterilized. Gandhi boasted of the incident in his writing, pushing the image to all Indians that women should carry responsibility to, for, for a sexual attack from upon them. And Gandhi believed Indian women who are raped lost their lives as human beings. Anyway, but so, uh, but of course there are many so so, so problems in the Gandhi's so so thought, but. How relevant Gandhi today is, is a Professor much question. He, she, he make analysis on the relationship he thought to Article 9 of Japanese constitutions. So one of the uh, uh, important points is the uh, uh, problem of the religions. So ideas, he, 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 Gandhi has a very unique idea of uh, so-called all perceiving pervading religions. All religions are equal. Religions have been interwoven. One sees a special quality in every one of them. Even, but no religion is higher than other, that was. So he tried to uh, combat the communalism or sectorism type here. But uh, actually, he was assassinated at the time of the partition of India. Do, do because of the communism in India. Still, communism in India also annoys uh, people in India, same in, as in Middle East. Also, another important topic is uh, anti-colonialism. We are now living in the post-colonial era, so-called, but maybe we reconsider this uh, so, uh, so, so perceptions. So, 
Gandhi is so, so Gandhi lived activities in during the anti-colonialist movement in India. Maybe so, this aspect of his thought is more have some implication for the people who want to construct the pacifism in the Middle East, I think. Uh, concluding the must. I, I repeat the same <laughs> words. There's no conclusion. <laughs> just, just I propose the topics to, <laughs> it may in, attract your interest. Maybe I want to ask you to provide me some much, um, some, uh, another topic materials to, to consider the topic we, uh, the, uh, jointly. So maybe there are, but uh, just I want to some words. So I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm imagine there are, so in, uh, one unified uh, so universal model of fascism. Well, there are many kinds of fascists in the world. China, Japan, Korea, Middle East. And how to unify it? How to make a fine to, to make a solidarity with these local fascists? Fascism. I mean, sometimes West, according to West, Western, Western-born fascism, uh, have some hegemonic power to so persuade, to integrate all the fascism. <laughs> Uh, sometimes such kind of fascists, but actually it's oriented by some their so cultural roots, like Christianity or Western world or European centuries. Maybe uh, so this is uh, one topic. The, the another topic: how how do how we can seek pacifism in the world or war on terror? Well, we are, this is a very so controversial issue. We are now in the new age of world war or world war with terrors. Actually, so how, how, how is it useful for the problem with I, Daesh, IS? Of course, this, of course, I cannot answer these questions, <laughs> of course. But, the, but we know, we, we think the pacifism in the context of the era of war on terrors. It's very important, it's not on the the violence of the violence of state regime violence, or state violence, but also non-state actors violence. How how do how do uh, uh, encounter with this phenomena with the new kind of pacifism? So in this way, so we must reconsider the meaning of security. From as uh, Ambassador Kagawa told already, the human security issues. Maybe we so consider the concept of securities. There are a variety of concepts of securities. In war in Syria, Iran and Saudi Arabia and Turkey uh, intervened in the war in Syria for their own securities. What, kind, what is the security for them? Security for the Iranian republics, uh, Saudi Arabian monarchies. What is the security for uh, meaning? How, Maybe so we, 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 we must uh, reconsider the notion of security uh, for, to reconstruct the fascism. fascism. Uh, recently, I'm thinking that fascism is, a, fascism is a very important part of security itself, or another word, software of security. We are, in, in the term of security, we are talking, or we are usually we are talking about the so institutional and material so aspect. It's a hard way, maybe. Of course, democracy is, is, is a democ establishment of democracy is a one institutional step for the established the, uh, to, secure, to make a security, to, to, to acquire security, or the, the giant power, the military power, is also the very good, maybe, maybe the, is uh, the useful for the, the aspect of hardware of security, but we must uh, co uh, so reconsider the role of the pacifism as a software of securities. Sorry, I'm not uh, political, but this is very naive expression. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe many specialists of security rough, might be so criticize me anyway. So I go back to the first argument introduction my, for the current Japanese political scenes. Maybe we must so be beyond, so go beyond the realist or obsolete pacifist thoughts. 
maybe so I maybe also we should think this Japan is the issue of security and pacifism in Japan by by not not by ourselves. We we need a dialogue with the people with in other areas. The same thing can be said in the Middle East. We we, we must argue on the pacifism, or security through the dialogues among the different civilization, different areas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, I'd like to now introduce Professor Ibrahim Awad, uh, who's former director of the International Migration Program at the ILO in Geneva. He was also secretary of the commission at the UN Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, and currently professor of practice of public policy, and also director at the Center for Migration and Refugee Studies at AUC. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Robert, for your introduction. And uh, thank you for inviting me to, to be discussant of the brilliant um, lecture by Professor Nagazawa, even though it is not very easy to discuss or comment on what I have uh, just heard. Uh, Professor uh, Nagazawa, uh, thank you very much really, for, for this very interesting um, lecture. I think, well, you said that the, at the end you made it a little bit easy for me when you said, said that there was no conclusion. <laughs> so I will take liberty in, in, in expressing uh, some ideas and reflections um, that uh, came to me as you were, as you were talking. I think the most important contribution of your lecture, really, is the lecture itself and its subject. Issues of interest are the same whether they are discussed in Japan, in India, in Egypt, in Spain, or in Mexico. There is a unity of humankind. Questions of peace, questions of pacifism, questions of, I don't like very much the concept of security, I have to admit, but the question of security, all of them are of interest to us. And people have listened to you talking about the experience of Japan, but it went beyond the experience of, of Japan. So I think really this is really what's extremely interesting because very often people uh, think in very, very narrow terms, very nationalistic terms. And Japan has a history of suffering because of nationalist um, extreme uh, nationalist, uh, nationalist feelings. Now, let me, let me uh, say a few words about what you have said. You, you started mentioning Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution, and giving up war as a means of action in international relations. And this was Constitution of 1946 or 47? Is it 46? 46, I think. You know, one year earlier, war had been banned in international relations. So in the Charter of the United Nations, in uh, uh, Article 2, war was also, was also g g given up. So there is parallelism, of course, Japan went through a very specific, uh, very specific uh, experience. The whole political culture of Japan uh, was reshaped. The law on education of 1947 made sure that, that you, you, you had the 
the cultural infrastructure for, uh, for, for pacifism. And this is extremely important. And I think this is really what uh, uh, makes the difference between Japan and other, and, and, and other cultures, other, other countries. Now, let me go over uh, some of the, uh, the issues uh, you, you have raised. Uh, and I will do them in a not a very coherent, uh, coherent way. You mentioned, you mentioned Japanese poetry and um, you mentioned pacifist Japanese poetry after the Japanese-Russian war. You know that there was Egyptian poetry because of, of the Japanese victory. The Japanese victory in 1904 was considered a victory of the Orient and Hafez Ibrahim wrote about, um, about um, uh, so you also, uh, I think we have to put the context of the Russia-Japanese war in what was happening at the beginning of the 20th century and what had happened in earlier years in the confrontation between what is termed as West and what is termed as East, uh, uh, Japan having been considered as the representative of the Orient in, in that, um, in that uh, uh, confrontation. And I take it from what you said that there is a long line of pacifism in Japan that goes back to the early 20th century. But we also know that this line was contested in Japan, that Japan was not completely pacifist in the 20th century. On the contrary, because as things turned out, in fact, the, the pacifists in Japan were vanquished. So it was, it was rather the, the, the representatives of aggression in Japan which, uh, which uh, uh, exercised power and which uh, uh, followed a policy that uh, ended up with inflicting, uh, inflicting uh, uh, violence on, on Japan itself. So uh, wh what I would like to say is that you will always find in all societies all components. No society is uniform. There is no billiard ball in societies. You will have the pacifists and you will have the no pacifists. You will have both. And it will depend on the political situation. I wonder whether pacifism would have won the day in Japan uh, had it not been for, for, for the extremely, extremely uh, violent uh, uh, results of, uh, of World uh, War II. So uh, when, when, when we expect others to behave in certain manner, the conditions should be there. The same conditions should, uh, should be there. Uh, you mentioned the, the little Gandhi in, in Syria. How could you ask Syrians really to be so pacifist when little Gandhi was killed? He tried to be little Gandhi, and, but uh, poor guy, he was, he was killed. So there was, there was no way that the Syrian uh, revolution which started, I personally wish, it had, it had continued pacifist, but the, the conditions were not there. Violence was exerted uh, against, uh, against the Syrian, uh, the Syrian uh, people. Now, and I think this is quite interesting. You, you wonder why do Arabs visit Hiroshima? Uh, Arabs justify their anti Americanism and, uh, uh, by what happened in Hiroshima. But I think there is something else. The tragedy of Hiroshima, frankly, is not only a tragedy for the Japanese people. It's a tragedy for humankind. This is not about Japan alone. This happened to human beings. Human beings should not have been subjected to what they were subjected to in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And this is I think what we should nurture, the, 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 the common feeling of humankind beyond 
beyond any national belonging, there is a common, uh, a common uh, uh, belonging uh, to, to humanity. And, 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 and I think this is extremely important. And probably this is what moved Professor Rauf Abbas to also translate, translate the book. He went beyond, and by the way, uh, 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 all Egyptian intellectuals who spent time, time in Japan, in university in Japan, or the United Nations University in Japan, they come back with this feeling. It's not really only about Japan, it's about, about a human, human being. Uh, Gandhi. And Gandhi was known in Medan al-Tahrir because of the slogans about Silmiya. No, Gandhi was a very, a very, it was a household name in Egypt in the 1930s and 1940s. Uh, Gandhi, don't, don't forget that uh, Egypt and, 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 and India were fighting British uh, colonialism at the same time. Uh, there were, they were close uh, relationships between uh, the Congress party in India, the Waft party in Egypt, and by the way, even Ireland. Ireland was, was party to, to these uh, relationships uh, uh, because of the common fight against. So Gandhi was, was and, and nonviolence was, was, uh, was uh, celebrated uh, uh, in Egypt. But how can you really, how can you make nonviolence tip the balance hmm, in a certain situation in certain uh, uh, conditions. So I think that uh, Gandhi was extremely respected, venerated, and by the way, the Congress party continued having a great uh, admiration in Egypt with successor of, 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 of Gandhi, but, but it was not really possible, I think, that uh, that uh, pacifism uh, carry the day in, uh, in Egypt. Um, how relevant is Gandhi today? You, you yourself, I think, said that there are critiques of, of Satyagraha, uh, and Satyagraha, again, uh, requires the existence of, uh, of certain conditions. And you also mentioned that there may be several models of pacifism. And, you know, it's good. I think there should be calls for pacifism. But unfortunately, they will not guarantee pacifism. You also mentioned Immanuel Kant, uh, 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 eternal peace, right? And yet, we know what tragedies Europe has endured uh, uh, over, uh, over the, last, uh, the last few centuries. So I think that we should have calls for peace, for peaceful relations, but you should work for peace and, and peaceful, and peaceful uh, relations. Um, I, 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 in, in a couple of minutes, I will, I will come to an end. Uh, I think that it's interesting to see how Japan, you mentioned 1991 and 2003 in, 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 in the wars in, in Iraq. In 1991, uh, Japan uh, funded a very a good percentage of, of, of the coalition efforts in pacifism, I think, would have required Japan not to fund not to fund uh, the, the 1991 uh, war, even if Iraq had been the aggressor uh, and Iraq had, had conquered and had conquered uh, Kuwait. Uh, in 2003, Japan went further, went further even, even and, and, and later even went further. So there was more militarization in Japan as, as, as one of the countries that spent the most on, 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 on military. Yeah, military expenditures are I think fourth or fifth country in, in, in the world. So it's good to have the idea. You should have the practice. You should, I don't think, unfortunately, that we can expect the practice to exactly follow the ideal, but I think the ideal should draw us, should draw us towards, 
towards a better, a better world. And I think that just raising uh, the issue uh, in different uh, settings in, in Cairo, in, in this or that city in the world, is extremely useful in order to, to, be, to build a peaceful world, but also a just world. Because without justice, really, it is extremely, and a just world, by the way, is not only the absence of war, or peace is not only the absence of war, but peace is absence of war and justice. Absence of war could hide violence in the form of, of maldistribution of, um, of resources, in, in, in the form of domination by uh, ones over others. So I think a, 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 a real pacifist, uh, pacifism uh, should work towards, uh, towards also towards justice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Howard. Um, before we send this to the floor for questions, I thought I'd have my own uh, couple of thoughts uh, and my interpretation on what's been said so far. When we talk about pacifism, my first question is, how does pacifism contribute to peace building in the Middle East? And to my mind, I'm thinking immediately of broad and robust diplomacy, the institutionalization of political will, whether it's a new regional security uh, organization uh, in the future remains to be seen. And building on agreements, I think, is also an important theme, uh, especially with regards to aspects uh, or issues such as a joint comprehensive plan of action with Iran and this 10-year window there seems to be in order to build out from there in order to address security issues uh, in a, a peaceful way, if you like. Uh, the second area that I think about is realism versus pacifism and whether that's engagement or non-engagement, uh, how to engage uh, best in international affairs, what kind of form that's going to take on. And I see from the Japanese perspective the kinds of uh, perspective when it comes to arms exports, for example, seems to be an area that some other uh, states can perhaps learn from. Uh, and this issue and discussions going on about the Constitution, uh, how assertive Japan's going to be in future, where and how it's going to engage is, is particularly interesting. Uh, pacifism as a, an idea or an ideology seems to be most difficult when it comes across other competing ideologies uh, in this region. And the, the struggle for the minds uh, and hearts, as they say, uh, continues. Uh, another area which I think is interesting to explore is the economic dimension. Investments into MENA uh, comes up a lot. And to what extent there's going to be investments in skills, in the human capital, cooperation and industrial or productive base development uh, from the developing world. But really looking at uh, Europe, US and parts of Asia, this short term versus long term uh, balance and the fact that there seems to be a lot of short term measures aimed at uh, the Middle East, anti-terror, anti-piracy, humanitarian intervention, less talk about reform building capacity and development. And finally, when it comes to Gandhi, seeing that through the eyes of someone who is struggling against the colonial uh, occupation uh, in India um, versus uh, in this country and other parts of the Middle East, the Arab uprising, the struggle for justice uh, and aspects of politics and economy uh, being slightly different. So can nonviolence work? Question mark, is it useful to explore new channels for peaceful resistance um, or peace in general? And my answer and it is a resounding yes. Um, so now, if there's any other questions uh, from the audience, we look forward to receiving those. Thank you. Please. lecture. Uh, my question is, to what extent you, you believe that pacifism will help resolve the ongoing crisis in the Middle East? And pacifism could be 
born out of a traumatic political experience or a traumatic historical experience like what Japan saw in the World War II or what is happening uh, afterwards. But if we take the cultural aspects, do you think that pacifism will be acceptable in the Middle East whose culture is entirely Japan or other countries like in Europe, France, for example, or Germany. And thank you very much. Should we take a, a few questions? Yeah. Oh, yes. um, my question is related to that, that first question. Is there any active cooperation between uh, Japan and uh, Al Azhar, for instance, here in Egypt? In, in like religious dialogue or interfaith dialogue or, or, or how to confront things like religious extremism and terrorism. Thank you, Professor, for that very interesting uh, uh, talk. Again, it seems all the questions are going around the same issue. In your view, whether you look at pacifism in Japan, what you would like to see in the Middle East, or elements of, a, elements of it in what happened in India. Is it a function of events or culture? Thank you, Professor, for the interesting lecture. Um, as the ambassador mentioned, I do believe that the East Asia is very unstable with the South China dispute and the problem in the Korean Peninsula. Still, these states, namely Korea, China, Japan, are very much interested in the stability of the Middle East. Uh, and as the Dr. Awad said, I do believe that uh, the idea of the concept of pacifism is very significant. However, also the working for the peace is also very important. In that said, uh, do you think the idea of the collective pacifism, of the collective pacifism action of the East Asia, namely China, Korea, Japan, is possible? And if it's possible, in what kind of mechanism do you think it's possible? Thank you. Is that enough for now? Mm, no, I see no comment. <laughs> Should we answer those and then go for another round afterwards? So, so thank you very much for so a variety and, and many comments and questions. So, so I, would, I would like to start the comment, uh, Professor uh, Ibrahim Awad. He, so he, he, he knows Japan very well, maybe so <laughs> better than me in some, some aspects. In the case of the, the first point, the japan Russia war, of course, so, uh, so I, I, we know, I know, of course, the, how japan Russia war was uh, accepted in the Middle East, as Ibrahim uh, Harris, Mustafa Kamil, or maybe the victory of the Orient over the colonialism. But uh, and anyway, so it's, I, I, I think the, the controversy theme, the character, nature of the uh, japan Russia war in, the Jap in Japanese context. Traditional ideas, so we have two, two kinds of nationalism. In the, the beginning of the modern times, we have good, good nationalism <laughs> constructs the nation state. But after the, after the, after the, the japan Russia war, uh, Japan has, has a war, bad nationalism, <laughs> colonialism. But I think this, this traditional idea is not, not the correct. Nationalism in any countries, born as a, as a to colonialist aspect, as I think, in many cases. But in, in once uh, historical stage, we we so 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 uh, get rid of this bad aspect. So so interventionist aspect of nationalism, I believe. Even for for example, is a, is a, how how is the case of the Ottoman Empire? On the map here, so is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, the participation in the World War One. Actually, this was a, the member of the colonial. Of course, he, 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 it, Ottoman Empire is facing the colonial invasion, but he himself is a, as an empire, colonial empire. 
Ottoman Empire, so conquered Yemen, and to control to the and other Arab countries in, in that area at that time. Anyway, so that, uh, so, so the, I, I, in this the first point, I must reconsider the nature of the na nationalism in a nation city building on the interventionist state of the modern state itself. We must control the, this nature of inter interventionist uh, character of the modern state. Now that we, we made the subtypical case, case of interventionist uh, uh, policy by Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Iran to the affairs of Bahrain, Syria, Yemen, Libya. Maybe, maybe it, was, it was natural so they have such kind of the intervention, in, in, interventionist natures. Anyway, fortunately, Japan obliged to, can, to cancel this, uh, get rid of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, so, uh, uh, so interventionist characters. So the second point, so we have the, the tradition I think I agree with you. Pacifism is a, a, a cultural concept. It's very related to the culture itself. So it's very important the Okano, poet Okano, and his teacher, uh, Moriguchi. The, his teacher, Moriguchi, is a specialist in ancient, hist ancient to Japan. Ancient to Japan is very, of course, before the history, maybe with the many fighting, but the ancient to Japan or the ancient first dynasty, Nara and Heiwan, is, Japan is a relatively pacifist state. But we enter the, day, the age of the medieval era. This is the age of the samurai. You know, the local militant land rose so get fighting each other, the land with their horse, samurai culture. This is one of the aspects of samurai culture. Now the soccer team or the baseball team are found of the symbol of samurai, well, we are samurai, they are samurai. It is very, very unique. Such kind of the idea is so manipulated by the military power to, to go to the war. So we, we must take, take care of this, this manipulation with the samurai culture. Of course, we have the aspect of the samurai culture or the pacifist tradition. Uh, and the, in the, you know, the, you know, the Genji tale, Genji Monogatari, the, the world of the most, the very be beautiful novels written by the female so novelists in the uh, uh, so, so, so 10 centuries. This is a, uh, 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 anyway, so this is the second point. That's a comment, answers. So as for the little Gandhi, Giyat Matar, I'm very sorry that the, his death was so utilize uh, some Western, Western powers to legitimize their uh, intervention to, to, to support uh, uh, financially uh, some, some military to the rebellions against Assad. It is a very sad phenomenon. It's a very, really, tragedy. That's an additional comment. So, so I, I, I totally agree that, that I, I very feel safe you mentioned about the humanistic so, 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 so sympathy to Hiroshima's case. I, 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 maybe I, I, want, I, I suppose this humanist uh, so, so sympathy now be shared with other, or most, most of the other uh, Arab intellectuals. Uh, so, so thank you very much for Gandhi. So, is that how the Asian people uh, so accept the Gandhi's from the 30s and the 40s to the after 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 the death of Gandhi. So, the name at the time of the Bandung Conference, Nasser so so, so discussed with the Nehru, the successor of the Gandhi's. Maybe it is so. The basis, this so if some so sympathy to Gandhi might be the became the basis was some kind of the solidarity among Asian countries. The way to and Amar uh, Amar Abdul Malik told the uh, similar similar so stories. Uh, but anyway, it is very difficult to so uh, to perform pacifism in so in in this uh, kind of situations. 
えー、っと,と,と、そうそうそう,そう、As for the Japanese defense budget base, I'm not from the Japanese government. I, I don't want to defend my experience. Anyway, so we have the limit of the defense budget, less than 1% of GDP. Maybe the GDP of Japan is maybe not, not so. I'm afraid now, now the government, current government to、uh, so, so, so take off. So, To want to ignore this limit of 1%, 1% per cent condition, anyways. But the most, most uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, among the comments by Dr. Ibrahim, uh, uh, I was very much appreciate with the, your、uh, word of, on pacifism. Pacifism is not, not in the, not the words, it is the work and the action. You can talk on the fascism about how we, we do by ourselves, not with, with, the, with the cooperation with other、so、people. Thank you very much. So I move to the, so the Dr. Mason's comment. I'm sorry, I'm not a specialist, of the, as I've told you, mentioned. I'm not a political scientist. <laughs> Maybe, but anyway, the pacifism, I, I mentioned that, I maybe very naively mentioned this、uh, uh, kind of the software, but of course, pacifism needs、uh, some ins institutional framework. How we construct the in these institutions? Maybe this is,、uh, some, it contains some answer to the, the question to the,、uh, from the audience. Maybe there is no pacifist state in the world. Maybe Bhutan is pacifist. I don't know. Some countries in, in, in Africa may be pacifist. Costa Rica. Costa Rica pacifist. But pacifism is、uh, totally originated from, the, as a, from people, a civic idea. This is a tool for, for people to achieve the peace. Of course, there is a, the role of the, the, the government or army or international organization to achieve the peace. But the, the peace, pacifism is for the tool of the people. Come and share the, share the, the、uh, so、tool for the people. So maybe I, I think the, so people should so make a solidarity beyond the, the borders to form the, such kind of、uh, so、institutional framework. But、uh, we know some cases, a variety of cases of this experiment. But I'm sorry to say, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm still is going. But so, Uh, I, it, it, is, it is remained very weak against the, some, some such kind of the software of the security world. So, in the second question, the Japanese security policy is also, <laughs> also this is out of my <laughs> field to answer.、Uh, so, but but uh, maybe, uh, so as for the Economies and relation between economy and peace, we have, Japanese have very bitter experience in the Middle East peace process. We support, we have planned to establish the Middle East Cooperation Bank for peace, peace in this area to for, open for Israel or other Arab countries. But this、uh, project was failed according to the Deterioration of the, the situations. At the time, we believe that the economy, cooperation, can be the basement for the peace, peace in the Middle East. Of course, so, but maybe, we, maybe I'm afraid we, we lacked some, 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 some political idea to achieve this,、uh, so、bridge, from this principle. Maybe peace must be with. Justice. We, not, we, we don't want the peace, some, some formal peace. Just we, we need the real peace. In this real peace, we need the justice. This is, this, this is very, so it's a very important thing we, we, when we talk about the Palestinian questions. Justice is a key word with the peace. So, I'm afraid. So, but my hope is that our government or other Western government or Arab countries want to so, so share this, the, this idea. But of course, the concept of justice will have the, so different among the countries, of course. 
there are Israeli justice, there are Jordanian justice, others maybe, but we must so try uh, endeavor to share the, the some maybe universal justice. Maybe I, I mentioned that there are variety of pacifism also, of course, but we we try to find the the universal justice to the for eternal peace. Well, of course, this is a very naive expression. So 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 so. As a, I move to the answer to the question from the floor, so actually it is very difficult to to find the possibility of the pacifism to bring the peace in in the in Syria, for for example. Maybe the main function pacifism is different in Japan and the Middle East. Japan pacifism for Japan is too. Uh, so 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 secure our pacific state. I mean, I don't know. No, Japan society really pacific society or not? We have many much problems. Just 20 years ago, we have the so mass destruction weapon accident. Sudden chemical weapons were used in the terrorist attack in the subway system. It is fast. So actually, maybe it's another, but, but so it's, maybe it's the first uh, so use of the selling gas in, in the world. Maybe next, ne next, next one in the city, or I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, so, but, but anyway, so the Pacific for Japan, how to so secure to uh, Japanese peace, Pacific situation, but it is not enough. How, so when, so, uh, how we how we we, we we are living in the peace condition? When I watch the television, we said so 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 the miserable situation in the Middle East and the areas. How this so different kind of the society co co coexists in the world? Maybe we, we have to do something for the, the other areas. So as for the pacifism in the Middle East. Not to, not to preserve the Pacific state, not to, to regain the peace. Well, this is a very difficult question, but so, and so, but for, for this difficulty, so I choose this tema. So maybe, <laughs> uh, so I cannot offer us the answer. M maybe, rather, I want to ask you to join the discussion, the possibility of pacifism. This is not, not so san amateur thinking in front of the specialists with the security or the policy makers. But so maybe we, 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 need, we need, actually need the civic solidarity among the people in the Middle East, beyond the, the ideology, the nationalities, is Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Arab countries. Maybe there is not such kind of the regional association of pacifism in these areas. The so big antagonism is Israel, Israel, uh, Israel and uh, Arabs, antagonism between Saudi, Saudi Gulf countries and Iran, or something like that. But maybe I, I repeat the importance of civic, civil, civic pacifism should be uh, constructed. Uh, ah, as for the Japan as a relations, I don't know. My, I, just, I wrote two years ago on Japanese an, an article in uh, in Japanese on the Azhar, Al Azhar and the 2011 revolution, but it's not to be translated to English. But anyway, uh, but I, I don't know any so relations so positive relation. And so apparent relation of the Japan or Azhar initiative for peace. Maybe, maybe it is about, it's a very good option to, for Japan. Of course, Japan is not a Muslim uh, country, but we, we, we should promote the dialogue with the Islamic world. As, uh, maybe we, we, we rely on the idea of Gandhi's so comprehensive notion of the religions. Maybe each religion so 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 compensate so so support easier so, uh, so uh, there is no so at uh, higher position among the regions. Uh, to, 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 to. So so. Uh, as for the question of China and the uh, China 
uh, so 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 expansionist activities in the in the Southeast Asia. So uh, so you so mentioned that political pacifism is uh, uh, so possible or not? Many, if political pacifism is possible, so it it is. It uh, could be, as, as, as I repeated, the, <coughs> uh, the civic one. Of course, the, the one of the, maybe, one of the critical issue or enemy of pacifism is, is uh, maybe nationalism. All the nationalism, but some aspects of nationalism. Nationalism is very important to make a national integration to keep peace among the same nations. But it has another, so, so, so evil aspect, nationalism. Some countries use the nationalism to, to, you, you, uh, to, to legitimate, legitimate to use the, the, the army to, in order to get the, uh, the political, uh, economic interest. Maybe so, nationalism is the most, most crucial issues in the East Asian countries. All the countries, South, South Korea, Japan, China, uh, now government wants the nationalists to legitimize their own com the com policies. Maybe, uh, maybe the new government of South Korea, I'm afraid that takes the same way, <laughs> or oh, nationalist way. <laughs> eh? uh, North Korea is a, you know, most a typical. Uh, eh? Oh, this, uh, no, oh, this is uh, maybe, um, of course, a kind of nationalism. Mm, but so, I, I mean, the, so the, the, the problem is that there are totally lack of the civic freedom, North Korea. Freedom is the basis for the, so the fascism, maybe. So, of course, the Korean, North Korean people, are, uh, in general, hate the war. Hate, I, I believe so. So the government is militaristic, aggressive. But he, he, of course, they are afraid of the aggression with the United States. We know it. But, but we, 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 could, we should, not, should not support the same feeling was shared among the people in the North Korea. Originally, the Korean people are most peaceful Japan, from Japan. We have a samurai culture, but they don't have samurai culture. <laughs> the, uh, the, some, the military class in, the, in the Korea was uh, totally controlled by the dynasties. In the case of Japan, samurai class captured state power, medieval, medieval eras. So as for the civilian control in Japan, we, uh, we, we take uh, civilian control uh, uh, on the army, uh, thanks to the United States, or the thanks to the defeat of the war. We accuse the army, you, are the, you have the responsible the defeat of the war. So, we, so we, 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 we lost the respect against the, the army. Now, the self-defense force may, may have some, uh, so gain that some respect from people. In, in the, some activities in the, the, after the, the great earthquake. The, but in the case of South Korea, they gained the, the civilian control by themselves after, after coup d'etat, military coup d'etat in the 80s, uh, 70s. But they regained, they, so they, regained, they gained by themselves the civil, civilian control on the army. It's very good. So have implication for other countries, where such kind of the civilian control not 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 established. Yes. So uh, maybe I cannot correct. So maybe I cannot answer Doctor Nabil's Maybe maybe I I will answer later. Thank you very much. Uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, if anyone's got a, a burning question before we finish uh, for coffee, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, I think your topic is very interesting, and your lecture is totally informative, and uh, I, I think it, uh, it, it appeals to me very much. So my question is that uh, uh, 
is it necessary that uh, the nationalism is contradictory with pacifism? Mm. So in this region, we have a, a very uh, high level of uh, sectarian strife. So if a good nationalism can prevent the country from, you know, uh, uh, divided internally, uh, is that kind of nationalism will be much better than the pacifism? Mm. You know, I, I think some, some kind of nationalism can um, build internal solidarity. And uh, uh, even if it is not a pacifism with other foreign countries, but in uh, modern times, we know the cost of the oil is uh, very high. So I don't think um, uh, there will be many countries that dare to open a war with uh, other countries in this time. So, so yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for your question. So, of course, this is out of my capability of the, of the uh, uh, to answer. So. Of course, nationalism is so has a various aspects. So I think, that, but nationalism is a very important tool for modernization, the economic de development. But after the achievements, such as so, 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 so gaining the prosperity or democracy, or the the, the other so regular basis of human rights, maybe. Uh, national, we, 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 we come go to the, end, the, the Asia, with the, so, so we, we now, that in this stage, we, we don't need the nationalism ever. It's some, so, of course, the nationalism, good, we are the good nationalism, the bad nationalism. Oh, I, I, know, I, know, I don't think so. Nationalism is the same. There is vari, vari, various aspects in it. Nationalism is good for, almost it's, nationalism is good for a domestic society, but for the outer, outer world, but it is not too correct. Even for the inter domestics, nationalism is, is seeks a very hom homogeneous society. It tends to discriminate minority groups. You are not just, we are not nationals. You cannot speak this language. What, what is your religion? Something like that. The, in the name of the nationalism, so modern, so still to try to modernize their countries, uh, sometimes so, so have such kind of the negative side. Sometimes internal colonialism might be happens. Internal colonialism, not, not outside, internal colonialism. With some, there, if there are some ethnic discrimination, it might be internal colonialism. So, uh, of course, the, so, but the, anyway, the nationalism is, is very so crucial issue for the development of pacifism. Yes, my, my, maybe it's my, it's my fault to uh, so describe pacifism is too much ideal, ideal. <laughs> Of course, pacifism might have some negative sides. Nonviolent, nonviolent movement of Gandhi have some negative sides, as my uh, professor. Uh, uh, Yamaguchi mentions. Maybe they're more complicated. Maybe there's some pacifism has some, some dark side. Some, some political forces used to pacifism to their own political purpose. So considering their crimes, for example. But, uh, but anyways, uh, I repeat the pacifism is the, the civic method, civic tool for our people, non-governmental forces in general. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Professor, and uh, thank you for your remarks. We look forward to discussing this over coffee now. I think it's just served outside. Thank you.